Hi guys, I'm Laura Vitale. Let me tell you what we're doing today because we all know Easter is right around the corner. I have been doing this, Laura in the kitchen, for 13 years. I feel like I've shared everything with you. Um, the best, the funniest, the coolest way to make something, not the funniest, the funnest way, the coolest way to make something. But what you guys come back day and after day after day for is the good old classic basics that you can rely on because you know that they're gonna be delicious and feed your family. So when I was putting together what I was gonna share with you for Easter, um, I put together two menus, which you need to follow me on Instagram if you don't because that's where I share all of that stuff. I shared with you a classic Italian menu that I grew up eating and in a, in a classic sort of American style. And I'll be sharing both of those menus with pretty much all recipes that already eat, exist on LarryInTheKitchen.com. Um, with the exception of a few, which are gonna be new, and I will share them here. I am gonna be doing some lamb, uh, grilled lamb, but with lamb in my family, you never make it without serving it with peas and potatoes. Like, it's just a thing, right? So I wanted to show you in this video two easy sides that you can make for your Easter table, and I think they would be delicious no matter what you're cooking. We're doing the easy peas and potato in the oven with rosemary and wine and onion, and then we're gonna do a very simple herby lemon orzo that I think would be great if you don't wanna do potatoes to go along with your entree, you can do that, that. and it is so good and so easy. You're gonna love it. So let's start with the potatoes. You're gonna get your oven preheated to 425. I'm adding some potatoes. You see how I like to cut them to chunks like that? Um, I prefer them better than wedges. I just think that they're easier to toss. I think that they're easier to eat. I think that they're more pleasant on your plate. And uh, you get, um, like, look at the amount of surface that has the potential for crispiness. You know what I'm saying? So to this, I'm adding some peas. Now, the peas are like a potato. It's like a veg, so it's not a decoration. So you're gonna wanna use a good amount of it. Now, I have to have onion. My dad has to have onion with peas and potatoes. It's a thing. He will not do garlic with peas and potatoes, but he will do onion for sure. Now, like I said, you can serve this with any entree you plan on making for Easter or any day of the week, quite frankly. But in my household, where I was growing up, you simply did not make roasted or um, grilled lamb chops, which is what I'm gonna be sharing with you, not in this video, but in a video coming up, you do not serve it without roasted peas and potatoes with rosemary. It's just, it's kind of like how in the UK you have mint with your lamb, with your lamb, like mint jelly. Us Italians feel that way about this. <laughs> we have to have it because it's just pairs so well together. So I do about a half of an onion for this amount. I'm only doing a smaller portion because again, when you're eating so much, this will do about six people really happily because there's gonna be so much on the plate. And then to it, we're gonna add a splash of white wine. Again, so necessary, especially since it's going with lamb. And then plenty of S&P, salt and pepper. Salt and pepper's here, where are our fat? Salt and pepper. And then you're gonna add a good splash of extra virgin olive oil. I want the good stuff. That bottle's empty. What are you gonna do with that? So you want a good amount because once that wine evaporates, you're gonna need the olive oil to crisp everything up and just be really succulent and delicious. And a little bit of rosmarino because like I said, if you're doing a roasted or a grilled lamb, there's a 99.99% .99 chance that you're gonna have rosemary with it, um, and we always do. So do one of those, get your hands in there, get those potatoes, and then I take my time to take the potatoes. You see, we, we went through the, the work of cutting them this way so that there's a lot of exposed yumminess right here that will in turn get really crispy at the end. So just take your time and make sure that that largest flat surface is touching the baking pan and you put the, the peas on, on top because the petite, the petites, the petites, the peas never get really crispy. Um, they just sort of soften and intensify in flavor and get really delicious. But the potatoes just need that bit of uh, contact with the pan for maximum crispiness. So now that it looks like this, I am going to cover these, yes, cover these with some aluminum foil and I'm gonna pop these into the oven 
I don't know, 40 minutes or so. I'll keep an eye on them. Once everything is evaporated and the potatoes are just about cooked through, I will remove the foil and let them just keep going until the potatoes get super delicious. They're not gonna get super crisp. They're kinda gonna get craggly in some areas, but I will show you what that looks like when I'm there. And now that I have this done, I'm gonna pop it in and get my water boiling for the orzo. I added my orzo to salted boiling water. I cooked it until al dente. Orzo takes no time at all to cook and it really bulks up, especially after it sits in like a marinade and cools after a while, it bulks up a whole lot. I'm gonna go ahead and take some garlic and I'm gonna grate it in the bottom of a bowl. Uh, when you grate garlic, as you know, when you're dealing with raw garlic, it gets really spicy, so really sharp. So I'm only gonna use about yay much because trust me when I tell you, it is going to be so strong when I add the hot orzo to it um, and let it sit for a while. Then I'm taking a combination of dill, parsley, and a little mint. You could just do dill and parsley if you want and very, very finely chop this because I want this to be, uh, you know, an ingredient, not a decoration. And I want it to really infused throughout the orzo. And every time you take a bite of orzo, I want you to take a bite of the herbs, but I don't want it to be unpleasant where you have such a strong bite of herb. That's why I want you to take your time and finally chop it. Add that right in. That's still all low. Lemon, I'm gonna do a whole lemon because I want this to be super bright and I want the orzo to really drink up lots of lemon, lots of extra virgin olive oil. And again, the heat from the orzo, because remember I boiled it, but I did not rinse it once I uh, turned it off. I just cooked it till al dente because I want that warmth to wake up those herbs and the garlic. Really good extra virgin olive oil. Look at the color. The color just tells you that this is gonna be strong and wonderful and delicious. Pinch of salt. Give that a stir. That looks like a lot, but trust me, when you add your orzo in, the orzo needs to have a pool of liquid to drink up. And as it sits, it will like bulk up even more. You'll see, it's like the wildest thing. Oh, and it smells wonderful. You see, we chopped those herbs so fine that it's gonna be just perfect. Ah, love it, love it. I'm just gonna set this aside while the potatoes cook. You really ideally wanna eat this at room temperature. I don't like eating it cold um, because it sort of seizes up and loses, I think, some of its flavor when you serve it cold. So I like to just leave it at room temperature and it's just gonna do really wonderful, beautiful things. Uh, and I'm just gonna babysit this while my potatoes cook. Potatoes are done. My orzo has been sitting, so it has absorbed all of that really wonderful deliciousness. And I wanna show you the magic of these potatoes. Now, remember, I cooked them covered for about 40 minutes at 425. Then I uncovered them and just sort of let that moisture absorb. And then the bottom of the potato, this is why I tell you it's important for that section to be, to have contact with the base of the pan. And then they're just fluffy inside, right? They're just, I don't know how to describe it, but See, crispy, and then the interior is just, they're just perfect, they're just perfect. And then the peas aren't really soggy. They're gonna get crisp around the edges and they're soft. Mm, mm. Oh, so good, so delicious, so easy. A must make if you are doing any kind of simple entree for your spring, Easter, whatever table you've got going on. They're just great recipes to have in your back pocket. I love a spud. Mmm. So good. Laura in the kitchen, I'll come for the recipe. Hope you enjoyed spending time with me. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.